One question you're probably pretty familiar with and maybe have thought on your own is why am I learning this stuff? How is this relatable to real life? How is this stuff going to help me? Now, this is probably the most famous questions that math teachers get day in and day out inside the classroom. And it's one question that actually got proposed by another student more recently. And I took a little moment to kind of think about things. And, you know, my perspective has changed over the years. But I wanted to take this video to give you kind of my thoughts as they have evolved. And to also give you a perspective of why is it you are learning so much of this math and why is there not so many real life examples that we see in everyday mathematics taught inside the classroom? Well, math is worthless in real life. And the answer is kind of complicated because yes and no, there are real life examples of what you are learning and it can apply. But the reason why it's a yes and no is because the math that you're learning in elementary school, middle school, and high school is just very foundational. And not a lot of the math can create stuff that's going to be real life examples because guess what? Real life is complicated. So a lot of the word problems or the applications are what we call watered down. The math is kind of reduced to make the problems very simple to match the concepts that you are learning. And sometimes the word problems just don't make any sense. They are actually more confusing than what a real life scenario would be. You know, hence like the most famous, you know, in elementary school, we'll get like Johnny went to the store and bought 99 bananas and left with 88 oranges. And you're like, wow, 99 bananas, whoever buys 99 bananas. But a lot of that comes into the creativity of like, well, let's try to make this relatable to real life. And yes, math is relatable. It is everywhere. The problem is the math that you are learning is very foundational and not all of it can be directly applicable to a real life scenario that's going to be exciting. That's going to be something that you can be like, oh yes, I can see this exactly. I can see this you know, tomorrow or I can see this today or when I go home. A lot of the math is creating a foundation. So therefore you can make a better understanding of when you get to those real life scenarios or when you further explore mathematics. The best example I can provide to you of this is with music and sports. So when I was in high school, I played the trombone. And one thing my mom was really important about was you need to do something in music. So she started me with piano. And then once it got time to be sixth grade, I was able to choose an instrument. Like a lot of students, I always wanted to play the drums. Thankfully, I never did. Um, I don't know why, but I'm really just appreciative that I was able to learn so much from choosing the trombone. Because when I decided on the trombone, which it was just kind of like a random, like this instrument looks cool. Let's do the, you know, I was a little slide trombone, like let's do that. So I did the trombone and I hated it. It was boring. I did not like practicing. You know, you're just practicing like Mary had a little lamb. Um, once you start getting to high school, you're doing all these scales. And it was a requirement for us to practice. It was a requirement for us to have a teacher that, you know, we'd go to private lessons and improve. And I didn't like it. I wanted to quit because it was just boring. It was like, why am I doing all this? I'm just playing basic songs. This isn't fun. And it wasn't until it gets so good that I was able to play in the orchestra as well as the symphonic band in my school, the top two kind of music programs that we had. Once I started playing music in those, you start to see the importance of, you know, the trombone, of how it integrates with the whole composure of the music. And then you start to see all the practice, all the stuff that you're doing, all those like scales and, you know, you're practicing with your notes. You're like, oh, now everything is coming to life. You start to see the big picture. And band became one of my favorite subjects. And to be honest with you, it was one of those subjects that saved me in high school because I would just get burned out from doing, you know, all my other studies, you know, physics and math. And band was one of those like repeats for me. But it was something also I thoroughly enjoyed. I really, really loved performing into the music. I loved, I still listened to some of the music we played, you know, in high school because it just had such a big impact on me. Um, but it was only because I put in the work of the foundation to be able to get to a level where I could see everything come together. And the sad thing is a lot of people that start music, you know, they only last a couple of years and they're like, eh, music wasn't for me. And, you know, they never learn anything more of just a basic understanding of music. And it's sad because the more music that you understand now, when you listen to something else, you can see all the stuff that you now know that all that knowledge, you can say, oh, I can see what they did there. Or I can see why this music is good music or not good music because you have a better understanding. You have a stronger foundation, just like with math. Similarly, like in baseball, baseball is one of those sports nobody likes to watch. They're like, it's the most boring sport. I don't understand it. It's just, you know, throw the ball once in a while, hit the ball once in a while. There's not a lot going on. And I always loved baseball. I was a big into sports when I was growing up. But the thing is, 
baseball practice, you're right. It's not that much fun either. Like we always would start with drills. Like even when we're playing catch, I mean, we're doing very, very fundamental stuff, just throwing the ball over and over to each other, going in different positions, holding our glove and our hands in different ways. Same thing with hitting. I mean, I would, I set up a tee inside my garage and I would hit the ball, hundreds of balls every single night, just practicing the stroke over and over and over. And it was redundant. It was kind of boring. Um, but you know what? Like building up those skills allowed for when baseball, you know, you get like one opportunity, right? You get that one pitch, like you got to maximize that opportunity. And the same thing, it's like, you know, the ball's hit to you. Like you got to make the play. It's not like you're going to get a next play over and over and over again. You have to make sure you take advantage of your opportunities. That's kind of the beauty and the difficulty in baseball. But the thing that's also more important is like, once you have that strong foundation, you understand what those players are going through. You understand the work that they put in. You can see the beauty of the game to watch it. It's not just about all the action that's going on. You see how players are moving in different directions. You see how they decided on what pitches or how the batter was able to you know, hit the ball in a certain area. You see that beauty. And the game is actually very, very enjoyable to watch. But the problem is most people that you know will go to a game, they don't have that foundational knowledge of baseball. They're just kind of watching it for the action. And the action is far and few between, right? There's not a lot that's, you're not going to see tons of stolen bases or, you know, all these home runs or like, you know, great plays. Like you're just seeing the, the surface level information. So for a lot of people, they check out of the game. Now, going back to mathematics in high school in elementary school, you're just getting the surface level information. And yes, as curriculum, we try to be able to relate things to real life because there are those applications. I told the student in pre-calculus, yeah, you're doing a lot to prepare for calculus, right? Because we're building up the foundation. But there is a lot of stuff that we can relate to real life scenarios. You know, we look into like matrices and, and coding and computer science. You look at vectors with video games. Um, I was talking about conic sections and looking at um, orbits and, and as well as like the glasses and how we, you know, reflect things with light. Also looking at with exponential functions and finance. Like there is some great information that we can have some direct examples. The problem is it's just surface level. Unless you have a deep understanding of the math, unless you go through the hard work, sometimes the boring work that we don't really want to do, then you can really understand how things are being applied. But we all know, guys, the world is complex. So with our basic fundamental knowledge, a lot of it is just not going to be that exciting. But here's the scary part. The higher you go up, the stronger your foundation is in math the more you're able to do, the more you're able to see, holy crap, this math is all around me. Now I see everything that I've learned, how it is applied in all these other simple disciplines, not just in math, but in biology, in chemistry, in music, in art. It's scary. It really is. And I remember when I was a undergraduate, I just passed calculus and I'm like, all right, you know, still kind of getting surface level stuff. Like in Calc 1, you're just doing like basic word problems. You know, some stuff is interesting. But then once I got into more math classes, I started to see, holy crap, there's so much more that I don't know. But also, I see how math is just everywhere. And that's what clicked with me for my love of mathematics. Up until that point, I was just doing math to do math. I liked it. You know, I had a kind of an appreciation for it, but I didn't really truly understand the magnitude that knowing having a strong mathematical foundation can provide to you. Because once you have a strong mathematical foundation, you start to see you don't know anything. There's so much more math out there to learn, but also you see how math is just embedded in everywhere. But it's very hard for me to say this to somebody that does not have a strong mathematical foundation because the less math you know, just the more surface level information you're gonna get. So the reality is math is everywhere. It is applicable to everything in our life. But the problem is, ladies and gentlemen, just like in music, just like in sports, you have to put in the work and you have to build up that foundational knowledge to get to the good stuff.